30 Years of Watchtower Slave, Chapter 19, entitled Establishing a Worldwide Theocracy. The first subheading is entitled No Escape. So on December 1st, 1941, his own assignments came to an end and he thought he was free from the control of the Watchtower. Uh, he thought he could escape by accepting an assignment in Florida, but that was denied. Instead, they sent him to become part of a very young Youngstown congregation, which he had just split up and decimated, and the area in which he had that opposition in the city of Struthers on the Sunday morning doorbell ringing issue. So in pinning him down in Youngstown, they were going to give him basically an ultimatum to take a back seat and buckle down or to get out. The next subheading is entitled, A Losing Battle. So when he arrived in Youngstown, he started to pioneer again. And he sold the brothers and sisters there on the idea of forming a congregation without delay and that's what happened. So he was trying to escape the jurisdiction of the Youngstown Company who were under the orders of the Watchtower. So he thought he would be able to hold them at bay or at arm's length, so to speak. He wanted to be really independent from the Watchtower, but somehow, some way, Watchtower was able to control him. So he began to build this new congregation up called the Campbell Congregation. And so he was determined to be truly independent from the Watchtower. But he was ever he was never really able to get cooperation from the publishers there. He ended up turning to be a stalemate, so to speak. Meanwhile, while World War II had begun, he had also become the object of other forces outside of the organization. Complaints were launched against him with the FBI, accusing him of being un-American. And possibly un-American because he had lived so long in Germany. And he also had been accused of being a chronic troublemaker. That could not be denied. So, under surveillance of both the FBI and the Youngstown congregation employed by the Watchtower Society put him under severe stress in which he was to eventually suffer a breakdown. The next subheading is entitled, The Clean Organization Reorganizes. So, the Watchtower Society was still using the nation of Israel and its monarchy as its pattern. So Judge Rutherford and the old society had been like King David and his military organization. This suited the Watchtower well, but because David had blood on his hands, he was not permitted to build the temple that belonged to his son Solomon. So the theocracy of 1938 could therefore not be built by the Judge Rutherford and the Old Society. It had to be built by his Judge Rutherford's quote unquote son, which would represent Solomon. But there was only one flaw in this pattern of thinking. Solomon had eventually defected and become an apostate to Jehovah God. How could Watchtower get around this and avoid this well their thinking was to become reorganized so that it would no longer be under the control of one man but rather under a consortium of leaders a board of directors so in order to provide this insurance of continuity with the new leadership they decided to form a New York corporation to supplant the Pennsylvania Corporation. The society had been incorporated in Pennsylvania as a benevolent organization dependent on voluntary contributions. But now Jehovah's Witnesses had been legalized by court action as a religion of buying and selling. 
this new charter, that of the New York Corporation, was the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society Incorporated of New York State and declared and established this fact for all times. So, in thus reorganizing itself, the society had done that which it had ferociously condemned. They had gone to the state of New York for help, rather than to trust in Jehovah God to perpetuate his organization. Its charter members were to be forever picked from the states of the United States. So, therefore, the Watchtower Society assured itself of an American charter. This indicated the Watchtower's decision to expand into the world with an American label. Now, remember at this time, after World War II had been fought and won, the American military prestige and financial power had become unmatched in the world. The United States of America was on top of the world, you could say. So possession of an American passport was an open seas for all countries of the West and their colonies, as well as those colonies or, excuse me, countries that were neutral. Only countries behind the Iron Curtain has the Watchtower Fair ill because of her American label. But the Watchtower just shrugs her shoulders and moves on. The next subheading is entitled The Theocratic Ministry Course. It became apparent that there were a glaring inadequacies that were showing up with Jehovah's Witnesses when they were pitted against educated men in Christendom who knew their Bible and had a comprehensive understanding of the Jehovah's Witnesses. This was clearly demonstrated when young Jehovah's Witnesses appeared before examination boards to defend their claims of being ministers or conscientious objectors to escape military service. The ignorance of the Witnesses was truly appalling, and that continues to this day. We might logically expect the ministry course to have something to do with the Bible truths. However, that's not the case. Instead, it's a systematic course of advancing training in theocratic truth, and it uses the various forms of argumentation. Even to this day, which there is no longer a theocratic ministry school, we have that brown book, Reasoning from the Scriptures. Basically, that's how can you tear down someone else's faith and build that up with watchtower indoctrination. The next subheading is entitled The Gilead Bible College. And this Bible college was formed in South Lansing, New York. So when it became evident that the World War II would not touch the shores of America and possibly incapacitate Bethel in Brooklyn, the Watchtower Society decided to go ahead with building the Watchtower College and named it Gilead Bible College. Again, that was in South Lansing, New York. Mature Jehovah's Witnesses and all full-time servants were called in and the first six-month course began at Gilead. So those graduating received a diploma and many were sent into small towns to build up the congregations. Others were appointed servants to the brothers, which service had taken place in the form of zone servants. The next subheading is entitled missionary work. So remember they were signed up for a six month course all this was was to bid time for their visas to become accepted and obtained. So since the World War II was still raging in Asia and Europe, the Watchtower Society concentrated largely on South and Central America. That's why in the first classes of Gilead, 
Spanish was part of their curriculum. They first sought these missionaries to build a nucleus, however small that was. Next, they concentrated on buying and the selling routine, and then slowly they introduced the seven-step brainwashing indoctrination program. The next subheading is entitled Missionary Motives. So, was their motives to preach the word as Jesus had commanded in Matthew 28, 19, and 20? No, their motive was to gain money to make the organization strong and powerful and to gain prestige for the organization. Their motive for going out into all the world is not to baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as they are commanded to do so in the Bible, but to initiate these people into the theocracy, not to teach them all the things that Jesus had commanded his disciples to do, but to force upon them to be slaves to perform watchtower service and to do all the things that the watchtower has commanded them to do and to put huge burdens upon them and to enslave them. That's what missionaries do. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses do. They, they put a huge load of people and they give you a stack of human man-made rules. Then the author goes on to talk about the third tier of the Watchtower. The first one was under Charles Taze Russell and that lasted from 1879 to 1916. The second tier was under uh, the Judge Rutherford and this lasted from 1942 or excuse me 1916 or 1919 until 1942 and then it was time for the third tier which was to last from 1942 and to last for a thousand years a new world society and so at this time things were ramping up they were preparing for the passing of the torch of Judge Rutherford onto this third tier of the Watchtower Society this is going to conclude chapter 19 and please stay tuned for the next Thank you for taking time to watch and listen to this presentation. Post your comments, like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the next chapter.